Fleet, and welcome to the very first episode of Captain's Academy with your instructor, Chase. In today's episode, I'll be showing you how to execute a manual torpedo drop that so many of you have been asking for ever since you've seen me do it during the Epic Battles video. So without any further delays, off we go. Today's carrier of choice is the Lexington class, which is at tier 8, and I'll be using her in this entire video. Lower tier carriers and planes follow the exact same method, but they do tend to have slower planes and they do less damage with their torpedoes, so you have to learn how to account for the speed difference and also think about how much damage you need to do. To engage the manual drop reticle, just hold down the ALT key when you have your torpedo bomber squadron selected, and in this battle, I will first show you the basics, as I'm here bombing a stationary bot, even though the bot is actually supposed to be moving, so you will see me kind of fail just a little bit as I don't fully kill off this bot Lexington. But how do I do this? So I'm going to take this clip, I'm going to slow it down a lot, and I'm going to point out every little thing that you need to know when you try to execute this yourself. Once again, this entire attack in slow motion and explained in more detail. First things first, you'll notice that I have grouped my bombers together. You can do this by selecting both squadrons by dragging a box around them like in any other RTS game. Once you have both squadrons selected, just fly them to a common waypoint and they'll form up into a nice little lump. The next thing to pay attention to is the direction at which you approach a ship. If you decide to approach a ship from directly astern or ahead, it is extremely difficult to hit them with torpedoes because they are a very narrow target. In this case, you'll see that I approach the ship from a parallel direction, and when I want to attack them, I turn my planes into the proper attack vector. Time to slow things down even more. Holding down the ALT key will get you the manual drop indicator. As you can see, it's a nice big circle with a green bar somewhere in the middle. The first thing you have to know is that the bottom of the green bar, as indicated here, is where your planes will drop their torpedoes. Now furthermore, torpedo planes have to approach the target in a nice straight line, so make sure that the arrows under your planes, indicated here, line up properly with the nice green bar. Also make sure that your planes are lined up before they hit that big circle you saw earlier, because otherwise your planes will do derpy spins in the air as they try to get themselves into a proper attack position, by which time the enemy ship has long gone from where you originally aimed them. And of course that will lead you to cry many tears of sadness as your planes completely miss their target. One last thing to remember is that the torpedoes do have a minimum arming range, so don't put that bottom of that green bar right next to the ship, because if you do, the torpedoes will do absolutely nothing. Put them back a little bit more and giggle like a schoolgirl as your torpedoes absolutely wreck your targets. But I'm sure that somewhere out there, someone's going, But Chase, you did that against a stationary bot, you noob. In your other video, you were just torping people who weren't paying attention to you. So show us some real gameplay. Okay, 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 okay. Here's me and my Lexington again, and the situation here is pretty bad. There's a DD and two cruisers that are closing me down. Now if the DD gets one good spread of torpedoes, that's it, I'm done. So the first thing I have to do is make sure that I present as small of a target to the DD as possible. So I aim my nose at the ship, of my ship straight at his. The second, I get one of my torpedo bomber squadrons up. I predict where the DD will move. I predict just how much distance I think my torpedoes will require to arm. And I drop one wave at him because I know that if I can hit with like just one or two torpedoes, that DD will die, which it does. I also manage, if you've noticed, to dodge all of his torpedoes. Of course, my problems aren't over yet. There are still two cruisers closing me down. And of course, the friendly carrier on my team, who's actually also in my division, is going to die a rather painful, miserable death to the torpedoes that were fired. I was able to react just a tiny bit faster than him, and I think that's what saved me. However, I still have a problem. I'm up against two cruisers at a distance where the cruisers are extremely lethal. So, big problems. I do notice that, however, that one cruiser is really low. So instead of taking two squadrons and attacking with both squadrons, I'm just going to send up one squadron and try to hurt one or kill one, and then maybe hurt the other. So my first target is the cruiser that is shooting at me, and also the one with lower HP, because I'm pretty sure if I do this right, I can wipe out that cruiser with one wave of torpedo bombers. But cruisers, as you've noticed, have an interesting ability. They have this anti-aircraft barrage, and you've noticed that 
on that earlier when I was taking Barrage Fire, my indicator had this humongous fan spread. Now cruisers, if they use that ability at the right times, can totally ruin your run with your torpedo bombers. I did something quite different. I got my bombers out of range so he's not affected by that barrage ability. Once again, predict the movement of the ship, predict the lead, drop it a little back, make sure that the torpedoes have range to arm, and off I go. Manage to take out another ship. Now this last cruiser is actually parked, but he won't be for long because as soon as he sees that this torpedo bomber squadron is there, he is going to start moving. Now at first I was going to attack him as he started to accelerate, but then I realized that he's starting to turn, which means that if he continues to turn to try to avoid my planes, he's going to run into an island. So instead, I just target where I think he will end up crashing to the island, and I drop another wave on him. And as you can tell, there's nothing he can do. He runs straight into the island, and of course he's going to eat my torpedoes. And I hit him very, very well, but while I'm so busy doing that, I kind of run into an island myself. So, yeah, I guess I kind of failed there a little bit as well. I admit that, I admit that, I have faults as well when I play this game. But this has given me a good opportunity, because as I'm extricating myself out from the island, he's going to have to do the same. And during this time, can't do anything, can't fire at me, can't really do anything, while my planes are reloading again, which means I'm going to be able to send out another wave of torpedo bombers at him, and possibly kill him as well before he gets to me. And of course, as you noticed, I am stuck on a tiny, I guess, smaller island, which makes it easier for me to get myself out and also to get myself moving again. Now, this is the thing about carriers. Never stay in one place. Never stay still. Because if you stay still, you're going to be in trouble a lot more times than not. This game, actually, I stayed still because I was trying to stick together with my teammate. And uh, as you can tell, things didn't really work out so well. Um, as basically the faster ships were able to get up to me and make my day kind of terrible. <laughs> but anyways, um, I have one new squadron heading out. The enemy cruiser is shooting at me, but I, I also know that he's used up his ability and that ability has about a two minute cooldown. So I'm not gonna have to deal with that crazy fan spread again. This allows me to set up for a proper attack run. So once again, I'm trying to get to an ideal position, approaching from a parallel position, turning in to a proper attack vector, predicting the lead, and also how much distance my torpedoes require to arm, drop my torpedoes, and as this cruiser is desperately trying to turn away to avoid them, the rear end of his ship takes two torpedoes, and he sinks, and that's the end of his day. Managed to sink three ships with manual torpedoes. On to the next battle. In this battle, I'm basically going to show you what two carriers are capable of when they're working together. Now before I get to this, I first I guess have to address why I decided to put a huge troll face over the chat box in the last video clip, and that was because Chat in that particular battle wasn't that nice, and I don't really want to name and shame anybody, so instead of naming and shaming, I just simply decided it was better just to hide the chat, and so nobody can see what happened. Anyways, on to this battle. So as you can see, um, we have found the enemy Lexington, and I have a group of torpedo bombers in the north, and the other carrier has a group of torpedo bombers to the south. We have in essence sandwiched this Lexington, and no matter what this Lexington does, unless his fighters come back, he is going to eat torpedoes. Now, I basically do what I normally do, which is predict the movement of the enemy ship, lead my torpedoes properly, predict how much distance my torpedoes require, and then drop my torpedoes. Now, I did miss with a couple, and in theory, at this time, that other carrier's torpedo planes should have come in and dropped right then and there, and that would have been sort of a perfect sandwiching and the type attack, whichever one you would prefer. However, he does still manage to get his torpedo planes around, and get off a pretty decent wave, and there we go, we managed to take out the enemy carrier. Later on, in the same battle, me and this friendly carrier are going to coordinate our actions again, this time against an enemy tier 8 battleship, the Amagi. Now this Amagi has made some pretty poor choices. 1. Totally alone. 2. Entering an area where the battleship can't really maneuver. It makes it really easy for carrier drivers like me to simply see that there is only one place this battleship can come from this little gap between the two islands. So all we gotta do is just wait for this battleship to appear, lead our torpedoes, predict the range at which our torpedoes will arm, and we're gonna drop three whole waves on this poor battleship. And this poor battleship can do nothing except eat these torpedoes and die. And this is the power of a coordinated carrier strike. And that's all folks for the very first episode of Captain's Academy. Hopefully I've been able to teach you all a little something about manual torpedo bombing. All it takes now is lots of practice to master this. 
If you like what I'm doing, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel as I'll be making more videos in the upcoming days and weeks. If you have a comment or a suggestion for another video, please leave those in the comments section below. I'm really, really looking forward to seeing some of you on during this closed beta test. If you see me in game, make sure you say hi. And anyways, aside from all that, I hope you all have a really fantastic day and I will see you all on the high seas soon.